Hey, I'm Mihul. I'm here at Tech Ed 2014 Houston, Texas with Scott Hansman. Hey, how are you? I'm excellent, my friend. Uh, you guys made an excellent set of announcements today. Can you just give us a quick summary? That was a lot of great info today. Yeah, sure. Well, so Visual Studio 2013.2 RTM, these .2, .1, these are updates that are kind of like a little bit more than quarterly, but they're free updates and they make major improvements to Visual Studio, so you don't have to you know, go get a whole new version of Visual Studio. And .2 for us as the ASP.NET and Web Tools team added new improvements for, for web forms and uh, new improvements uh, with the way how NuGet behaves. So people who have 2013.2 should definitely get that stuff and make sure that they look at the MSDN web dev blog. We recently got our whole social media game organized. So Facebook slash ASP.NET, Twitter slash ASP.NET, and the web dev blog, we get the entire team now blogging in one place. So you're going to hear from devs, PMs, and tests. You don't have to go and follow 20 different blogs. Blog at msdn.com. It's called Web Dev. Everyone is blogging in one place. It's fantastic. We will put links to that, and we'll put links to your talks today. They were fantastic. Thanks. The the stuff that's kind of mind blowing is you've got now. Uh, can you explain what is this about running ASP.NET just about anywhere? Okay. So ASP.NET V Next, uh, and this is very very early. We're releasing a 0.1 release, alpha release. It's up on GitHub at GitHub slash ASP.NET, or you can take a look at ASP.NET slash vnext. That's where you get all of your vnext information. We've got a CLR that's not the desktop CLR, but it's a core CLR. So it's more like the one on the phone that you think about. It's a tiny CLR. Mm -hmm. And we've got the runtime and the .NET framework down to about 11 megs. Wow. So then you could then have multiple apps, each with their own custom version of the framework. So to put it this way, we built an app, we published it onto a USB key. Then I took it onto another machine and then ran the website off the USB key and it's guaranteed to run the way you wrote it. So now you can have side-by-side -side apps and one won't break the other if .NET gets updated. That's awesome. What's cool about it is that it puts IT people uh, at ease because you can't break an app by putting a new version of the .NET framework. So developers get the latest stuff, IT people get a machine that's locked down and secure. And uh, the other scenario, you guys mentioned that if there was like some zero day break fix that you pushed onto one machine, another machine didn't have it, right. it was less likely. So if you had version 419 and we discovered that there's a bug in that, we can install 420 at a global location and then your, over, your local one would be overridden. 420, huh? Yes. Well, that, that just April 20th happened to be the time I that know, we. I know, I get that. That's how it happened. I get that. I get that. Now, the uh, other big thing is why. I love what you're doing with the modularization and stuff, right? What's happening with ASP.NET though? It seems like it's changing quite a bit, right? Is it too, is there a, it, it seems like you're making it much easier to help developers who are on GitHub and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. To say, look, there's a project out there, they want to use it, they don't have to worry, it's not so tied into Visual Studio, right? Well, it's about choice. So okay. you've got a platform choice, Windows or something else. You've got a tooling choice, right? Like Visual Studio or something else. And then you've got your choice of your, your libraries. And we want to make sure that people have choice. So we think that you know, these tools and this framework on Visual Studio is going to be great. But if you want to do uh, you know, Linux and, uh, and Sublime and R stack or Windows and Visual Studio and uh, you know, Nancy FX or some alternative stack, you should be able to make those kinds of choices. So things are going to be modular and anything you want to swap out, you should feel free to swap it out. Very cool. I think that's excellent. And Visual Studio is a fantastic idea. Right? Well, and in, in Visual Studio, it, you're going to get light up. So for example, if I wanted to change my references, in Visual Studio, I get the add reference gesture. It's going to automatically update my project's JSON file. And in Sublime, I need to do that myself. Right. But we're going to have a command line SDK that's going to allow you to do all the things that you need to do from the command line if you don't have VS. Right. Now, what's one last question. I know you got to take a catch a flight. What's the vision? What's, what's going to happen in the next year? Or where do you want to go, I think, with ASP.NET, I should say? Well, right? maybe not even just ASP.NET for the web in general. Well, that's kind of a, there's two questions there. So some people are saying, oh, well, this looks a lot like Ruby and it looks a lot like Node. From a developer agility perspective, we want that. But Ruby and Node have that very you know, dynamic language and that, that ability to go and hit refresh. Right. That's, a, that's a strength. But what we have on the side of uh, the CLR and on the static, you know, a statically typed language is, is speed and power and raw throughput and threading and the power of the CLR. So what we want is the developer agility and the flexibility on the Node and Ruby side and the 
full power and strength of the CLR that you've trusted for the last 10 years on this side. So we wanted to have the best of both worlds. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Scott. We'll put a link up to your blog post and the videos today as well. Cool. Thanks a lot.